Welcome, and thank you for watching this presentation on multimodal container planning and how this can be done using the quantum annealer. In this presentation, I will show you how this container planning problem can be formulated as a QBO formulation that fits the quantum annealer and how this QBO can be implemented. In this presentation, I will first introduce the TNO organization. Next, the environment will be described. What is multimodal log logistics and how does the problem look like? Then I will step into the mathematical formulation of the problem. That will be done in the form of the cubo that is needed to implement this on the quantum annealer. And I will tell something about what is needed to solve this cubo on the quantum annealer. At the end of the presentation, I will say something about the results that follow the implementation and draw some conclusions. TNO stands for the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research. It was founded by law in 1932 to enable business and government to apply knowledge. As an organization regulated by public law, we are independent, not part of any government, university or company. TNO stands for efficient innovation. We don't do that alone, but with companies, government and a whole range of organizations together. Through, through collaboration, we create innovations that sustainably strengthen the competitiveness of companies and the well-being of society. We develop knowledge not for its own sake, but for real applications. We work on issues that concern our environment, safety and security, the energy transition, innovations in industry, and how to keep the aging population actively engaged. One of the areas we are working on is efficient transportation and logistics. One of the topics is efficient container transportation. Container transportation has various flavors. We have unimodal transport, and that usually refers to loading cargo onto a single transportation mode, usually a truck, and driving it from the origin to the destination. Multimodal transport refers to transporting cargo from the origin to the destination by more than one transportation mode. And in intermodal transport, again, more than one transportation mode may be used, but the containment unit, the container in this case, must always be of a standardized size. When looking at the planning of container flows, it is often categorized on three levels of problems, strategic, tactical, and operational. Strategic problems concern the long-term investments in the transportation network, for example, where to build new terminals. Tactical problems may concern service designs, for example, determining how many times in a month a barge should make a round trip. And operational problems concern about using a current network in an optimal way for, for problems occurring in the present. Those operational problems can be divided into various classes, for example, problems in which containers are assigned to, to existing barge services, or problems in which the routes of barges are determined for a given demand, and problems in which both assignment of containment, containers and the routes are decided upon. In an operational dynamic or environment with a lot of uncertainty, or for example in a single modal environment where real-time system characteristics are used in the planning, short computation times are crucial, which makes it possible to repeat the planning process with a high frequency. To this end, efficient algorithms are, are proposed in literature or techniques are developed to reduce the complexity of the problem. Next to software and algorithm enhancements to speed up the computation time, also hardware developments can play a role. One promising direction here is the use of quantum computing. The problem we look at concerns assigning freight containers to transportation modes, such that the, container, the containers reach their destinations before a certain deadline against minimum costs. This is given that the transport modes have, have uh, fixed and given schedules and the features of the problems are deterministic. These problems are often solved using minimum cost multi-commodity flow problems on time-dependent graphs and space and space-time networks. We will look here at a very simple 
version of this problem. For each container, we can use a truck or a barge that follow a specific route that consists of various tracks. There are cost assigned to the use of the barge routes and the use of the truck. This problem can now be formulated as an integer linear program problem, where we minimize the cost under the constraints that each track gets no more assigned than its capacity. Note that, for example, the variable x, y is zero, then in the uh, um, then, then in the optimization problem, the cost equals uh, CB. If x, y is one, then the cost equals CT because the two CB terms cancel out. In the second row of this problem, we see the capacity constraints. Such ILP problems can be solved using several kinds of solvers, heuristics and meta heuristics. We will use quantum annealing here, which can be seen as a hardware implementation of simulated annealing, which is a meta heuristic. Here the problem needs to be formulated uh, as the Hamiltonian, which can be seen as an energy landscape. In nature, physical systems tend to evolve towards their lowest energy state. Objects slides downhill, hot things cool down, and so on. This behavior also applies to quantum systems. Quantum annealing starts from a quantum mechanical superposition of all possible states and converges to the ground states of a targeted Hamiltonian. And this Hamiltonian encodes the solution of the problem. And special here is that it uses quantum tunneling, finding this solution faster than in a simulated annealing environment. If you want to use the D-Wave quantum annealer, we have to formulate this ILP, this integer linear program problem, as a QBO. This means that the X values are binary, that we don't have any constraints. The constraints have to be translated to the objective function, and the objective function, the objective formulation, is quadratic. This formulation to a cubo can be done by defining, in this case, two Hamiltonian matrices, HA and HB, where HA equals the objective function, and in HB, the constraints are modeled. Here, A and B denote penalty coefficients to be applied such that the constraints will be satisfied. It's very important to determine the right values of A and B. A rule of thumb is that we can choose A as 1, and then we have to choose B um, higher than the largest cost coefficient in the Hamiltonian. The, 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 the Y variables denote ac um, additional slack variables to model the inequality. So the ILP has an inequality as a constraint, and we can't use, we can't use inequalities in the, the um, uh, Cubo formulation, and that means that we have to use uh, additional select variables to solve this inequality. This simple model, using just one truck and one barge route, can be expanded to more barge routes. For example, here we have a three barge routes uh, formulation where each container have to have, has the choice of one truck route and three barge routes, where each barge route uh, consists of a number of specific tracks that it can use to come from the destination, uh, from the origin to the destination. The QBO has to be embedded into the D-Wave CPU structure, which has a Chimera structure. Because of the limited connectivity of the chip, a problem, a problem that variable, so the, the, the X value, has to be duplicated to multiple qubits. 
but those qubits should have the same value at each time, meaning that the weight of their connection should be such that it holds that same value within the optimization process. All those qubits rep representing the same variables are part of a so-called chain, and the edge weight is called the chain strength. And this is an important value we have to set in the optimization pro process. In an article of, of Coffrin, he indicates that if this chain strength parameter lambda is sufficiently large, sufficiently large, then the optimal solutions will match, will, will match a specific value. However, the goal is to find the smallest possible value of a lambda to avoid rescaling of the problem. Coffrin also indicates that finding this smallest possible setting of, of lambda can be an mp hard problem. As an example case, we use a two alternative route problem as, as a cubo formulation, which consists of 10 containers and 12 tracks. We implemented this and we first used the simulated annealing solver of D-Wave, uh, which is part of the D-Wave environment. We use 500 samples uh, in this simulated annealing environment and we set A to 1 at, in, the, uh, in this problem. And following the rule of thumb, we then know that B has to be greater than 10. In this simple problem, we already knew the optimal solution. And we can play with the value of B to see how it reacts um, in finding the optimal solution. We see that indeed using a B too low, for example, six, gives solutions that are better than the optimal solution in energy level, but they all violate one or more constraints. So that are not allowed solutions. If we take B is 12, then this gives a range of, of solutions that include the optimal value, which will be found in most of the runs. If we choose B too high, then we are given all allowed solutions, but those are solutions here in the, in the figure are mostly to the right part, uh, and they are not very close to the optimal value. If we now use the quantum processor unit, so the real quantum annealer, um, then we, we use 1,000 readouts, 1,000 samples per run. Uh, and then again, we can do a, a grid search to find the best parameter setting. Now, next to A and B, we also have the extra parameter lambda, uh, the chain strength of the problem. In this table, we see three values for B, three, six, and 12, and 10 values for lambda. Um, in this table, we show the best allowed solution, uh, denoted by min, that does not violate any constraint. So that are all, that's, what, that's the best allowed solution. Then we show the average value of all the allowed solutions of this run and also the percent the percentage of allowed solution that this um, that this um, sample finds we expect we would expect that the best set of parameters would be in the right lower corner of this table if we use the rule of thumbs however what we see here is going more to the left upper corner gives better solutions on, on average, and also it, it finds better solutions for the minimum value. So we took a problem for the, for the logistic operations and modeled this problem as a cubo to be able to use the quantum annealer as a solver. When implementing these problems on a D-Wave quantum annealer, there, there was a number of implementation issues, such as finding the right embedding, defining the chain strength, and finding the right penalty functions. We showed how this is addressed by doing a parameter grid search for the problem. What we saw is that the calculation times 
do not compete with the commercial solvers for this type of problems of this size. But however, the expectation is that using the quantum CPU will scale better for bigger problems. So if, if the problem grows, then it, 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 it's ex expected that the calculation time of uh, the uh, D-wave annealer will not grow as exponential fast as the, 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 the c c commercial solvers at, at this moment uh, will, will see. Um, for further research, we, we recommend uh, uh, to, to find a more general idea for finding the, the parameters, especially the combination of, the, uh, of the, the penalty and the chain strength parameter. Uh, one extension um, of the set of with alternative path is recommended to investigate um, and uh, an integrated way to include the promising path to this set. So here we think, and we already are investigating this, that here we think of introducing a quantum variant of the known classical techniques of column generation. So that would be a quantum column generation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you want to contact me, you can send me an email at frank.philipson at tno.nl. And if you want to read more about this research, you can go to archive where the paper that the presentation is, is based on can be found. Thank you very much.